In this video, I will show you how to make this exact animation in Blender from start to finish. As always, it is going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing S, then Set to scale the cube on the Z-axis. And then press S, then Shift Set to scale it only on the X and Y axis. And then let's go into the physics and let's add some passive rigid body physics. And uh, set the shape to box. Okay, and then press Shift A and let's add a cube. This is going to be the object that pushes the cubes away. So press S then X to scale the object on the X axis. And then press S then Shift X to scale it only on the set and Y axis. Next, we can press numpad 1 for front view and then press G to grab. And let's grab it slightly above the plane. So something like this. And then press tab for edit mode. Select the front face. And then press G, then X to grab the face on the X axis. And then press S, then Y to scale it on the Y axis. So that becomes pointy. And then next, press tab for object mode. And then we can add the rigid body passive physics to this object. So let's set the type to passive. Set it to animate it because we're going to animate it. And then set the shape to mesh. Next, we can save before we continue. So we'll give it a name and save it to wherever you want on the computer. Then press enter to save. And then press tab for edit mode and then shift S and cursor to selected. And then we can use this 3D cursor to set the origin point of this object right there. And this allows us to scale and rotate from that point. So uh, let's scale for example. So press S to scale. And then next we can rotate it. So press R then set to rotate it on the Z axis. And then we need to scale up the plane. So uh, select the plane and then press S then Y to scale it on the Y axis. And then press tab for edit mode. And uh, let's select this face as well and grab it a bit backwards. So press G then X to grab it on the X axis. And then press shift A. And let's add a cylinder as well. Just to make this uh, pushing object a bit more interesting. So press S to scale and then tab for edit mode. And then we need to select these two faces on each side. Hold in shift to select multiple faces. Then press N, set the increase value to one. And then let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And by using the increase value, we can make sure that these faces stay flat, even though we add some subdivisions. And then we also need to add some smooth shading. And when we add auto smooth and add the smooth shading, you can see that it messes up. So we need to enable auto smooth after adding the smooth shading. Okay, so now we have a nice cylinder as well. And then we can press R then set. And this is going to be the animation. Okay, so next we need to add the cubes. Let me just scale up the plane a bit more. So S then Y to scale it on the Y axis. And then press Control Shift S to uh, save once again. And let's add a new save. Okay. And then for the cubes, we can just add a uh, cube, so press Shift A, go to Mesh, and then Cube. And then we can go into the materials, make sure to add a material to the first one, so that we get a material for the rest of them as well, if you want to change the color later for all of the cubes. And then we can also add the rigid body physics. We can set the collision shape to Box. And then under Dynamics, we can set the damping translation to 0.35 and the rotation to 0.6 which I found looks good for these types of cubes, for these types of simulations. And press S to scale it down. And then we just need to duplicate it a bunch of times. So press Shift D to duplicate. And I'm going to say one more time, just in case something goes wrong. And in order to make sure that the cubes just don't fall flat on the surface, you can press R twice to rotate the cubes freely. 
And then I'm just going to delete the light in case we select it when we duplicate. So press X to delete. And then let's select all of the cubes. And then press Shift D to uh, duplicate. And then you can just duplicate a bunch of times. Make sure to uh, select some different variations as well as adding some individual free rotations as well. So uh, I did this many times. And also make sure to add some rigid body physics to the cylinder. So I just set it to passive and then cylinder. The next we need to animate the pushing object. So press I to keyframe and let's keyframe the rotation. And then we can go to frame 60, for example, and then press R set then minus 180. And then press I once again to keyframe, keyframe the rotation. And then we can go to frame 120 and then press R set then 180 to rotate it back. And then press I to keyframe. And when we play it from the beginning, you'll see that it goes back and forth. So the next step will be to loop this so that it continues. So let's drag the top right corner of this window and go into the graph editor. And then we need to go into the modifiers, add modifier, and then cycles. And by adding the cycles modifier, it is going to continue going back and forth forever. We can also add some additional frames by increasing the end value. And by going into the rigid body world settings and drew cache, we can also increase the number of frames that the simulation lasts for. So let's uh, play it from the beginning. And as you can see, it works just fine. And I want it to last a, a bit longer. So uh, let's pause the simulation by pressing space. Let's go to the first frame. And once again, I'm going to duplicate them. Press Shift D to duplicate, and then R twice to rotate them freely. Okay, so let's play simulation once again. And this time it's going to last for uh, more frames as we added way more cubes. So uh, at around 350, the simulation is done. So uh, we can set the end frame around there. Okay. And then next, I'm going to remove this window. And then we can start setting up the materials and the lighting. But uh, before we do so, we can switch the rendering engine. So let's set it to uh, cycles. And then if you have a GPU, make sure to use it. You can use EV as well, but it's going to look way better with uh, cycles when we have so many cubes. Then let's make the background completely white. Just going to add a uh, simple light setup. And then I'm also going to make the background transparent so that we can add a different color to the background later. Now, as for the materials for the plane, for the pusher and the cubes, you can add whatever color you want. I'm just going to add some simple glossy shaders. So just play around with the different colors and the different values until you have something that you like. For the lighting, I also like to add a sun in addition to the white background. So uh, let's uh, set the strength to five. And then you can press R twice to rotate the sun freely. So something like this. And then I think it's starting to look good enough. Now, when you're happy with the colors and the materials, it is time to set up the camera. So uh, to set up the camera to your current point of view, you press Control Alt Numpad Zero. And then we can go into view and lock the camera to view and set up the camera wherever you want. I'm going to set up the camera so that the plane is in the middle. And let's also bake the simulation. Click bake. And now we can see what the final render looks like. So I think this is a nice setup. So the next step will be to set up the output settings. So uh, let's press space to pause the animation and then go to outputs. And 
I like to set the resolution to 4K, which is 200%. If you want 1080p, you can just leave it at 100%. And then let's create a folder for the final animation. Give it a name. And then give the output a name. And then you can convert these PNGs into an MP4 file later on. I have a tutorial on that on my channel. Okay, and I'm going to bake one more time before we start the final render. And everything looks fine. Save one more time, go to render, and then render animation. And that's it for this video. If you want more Blender simulation tutorials, make sure to check out my channel. Hundreds of tutorials and more coming soon.